So today, 10th of December 2020, Levi's release a limited edition, so 501 pairs of their 1944 Fit 501s. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, this is CRD, where we, we talk about denim a lot, as well as other sort of menswear related stuff. But there's nothing very much more related to denim than Levi's. So I think even though this news came in late, it came in like an hour ago. And depending where you are in the world, actually, these jeans have might have actually already dropped. And given how popular other limited editions from Levi's have been, they get sold out like that, and there are very, very few of these things. So, yeah, I mean, I hope you're seeing this, and I hope you get, if you want a pair, you get to jump across to, to one of the places that is actually selling them, and uh, hopefully you're not too late to get a pair if this is the first, you're, first time you're hearing about it. But even if you are watching this tomorrow, or in six months from now, or whatever, I still think is a little bit of Levi's history, and a very interesting little bit of Levi's history, that's, that's worth taking a little bit of a dive into, worth discussing, and worth having a look at the jeans that they've made, because they're interesting, they really are interesting. You see, back in the 40s in the States, because of, of wartime rationing and because a lot of the materials, a lot of the production was geared towards making bombs, military outfits, and all these other things for, for wartime efforts, there was a rash of inconsistencies that went all across the board in clothing production in the States. But people were still working, people still needed jeans. But it did affect how Levi's had to produce their jeans. They've had a 1944 version before, and maybe you know of this. It's got like painted on arts because they couldn't spare the thread. The thread was seen as unnecessary for, for, for branding. You know, the, that extra thread, even though it wouldn't have been very much, the branding was seen as unnecessary, so they stenciled, they painted on these the arcs instead. They took the rivets off the coin pocket, match pocket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it affected the, the Type 1 jacket as well. The, the flap was gone from the Type 1 at that time. So, yeah, this, this collection that they've just released just now, this is a celebration of these inconsistencies. And it's actually quite charming. These jeans will come in five different versions and a hundred of each. Actually, the, the first version's got 101, so they can make up the 501. And each one represents a different version, a different variation of these inconsistencies that you found in the 501 jeans that were produced during the 40s. So you're going to have different, different hardware, some branded, some, some unbranded. On the inside, you're going to find this different fabric used for the pocket bag. That's just simply because yeah, they just didn't have the, the normal fabric that they'd use. They didn't have the cotton twills, so they were just like, okay, whatever's lying around, we're just going to use that. And combine all that with the, the stenciled on arcs, they, you, can, you can really see that they've had some fun with this. Like, some of the arcs are squint, some of them are, are aligned properly and look like the, the normal arcs, the sewn on ones, they're just painted on. Some of them are upside down. And so each of these different variants, oh, and some of them aren't there at all, I should mention that. All of these are different variations is quite a nice glimpse into, into the times, into the 40s, and a nice glimpse into what was going on with Levi's at that time. And this collection, I mean, calling it a celebration as they do in their press release, that's a little bit of a strange one to, to combine it with war. But I still think it's a, it's a nice highlight of that part of Levi's history. And there is one other very important thing to mention here, that these are made of uh, white oak comb mills denim. Now, that was the denim supplier to Levi's for, for decades. I, I don't know when the golden handshake was, some, sometime back in the early early 20th century, like they had the, the golden handshake and that was the, that was Levi's saying to Comos, like, okay, we're going to use you for our denim suppliers. And then that comes the, the red salvage ID and all that other good stuff. But like, that's, that's diving into Levi's history for another time. Anyway, the point here is, I always wander around the point. The point here is that 
comb mills close the white oak plants that was producing the last of the selvage denim for Levi's. I think the last plant that produced selvage denim in the US at that time. They closed that in 2017. And so Levi's were looking, or have Levi's Vintage Clothing has had to look elsewhere to Japan, I believe, to produce their selvage denim. They still had some of the, the comb mills den, denim lying around, and we've seen that used in other limited edition releases since 2017. And apparently this is really the last, last, last of it. So these jeans, these are really, along with all these inconsistencies, and along with this denim, this is, these jeans are really something for, for the denim enthusiasts, for the true dyed-in-the-blue denim head, for the collectors out there. As I said at the beginning of this video, these have actually dropped already, depending on where you are. And if you're a collector and you've been wanting a pair of these, I hope you were lucky because I just checked up on cultism and they're gone already. I mean, I, I guess they were limited to the, they limited the, the genes that were actually being produced, obviously, uh, to 501. And there was only a very select number of stores that were actually selling them. I, I, I think I saw List Cultisms, one of them, Hepcat up in Sweden was another one. Not too sure about the other ones. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, they went fast. I don't know how fast they went, but they went very, very fast. Maybe they were only limited to one pair per size per store. That could also be something. Um, guys, if, if you are one of the lucky ones that, that got um, that managed to get a pair, I would be super, super curious to uh, to see which ones you got, to see the the variations and inconsistencies that, that your pair actually had. I mean, just drop me a line over, direct message me on Instagram, that's probably the best thing. Um, there's uh, a link to Instagram down in the description below. Um, yeah, that would be very, very cool to, to see some of these out in the wild. And also, if you did get a pair, are you going to wear them in or are they going to just be be part of the collection. That's also something I'm very curious about. Uh, right, this was a quick one, um, put out very quickly as well. Uh, okay, Silk Relations, so that's the Levi's press office or press agency they're using. Silk Relations, please, 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 if you get this information to us like a little bit earlier, like that would make things a lot easier so we can get the news out there. But yeah, since the since these were sold out so quick, obviously, Levi's Vintage Clothing don't need very much help about getting the news out. So, yeah, I kind of understand that as well. Anyway, right, waffling again. So I'm just going to wind this up now. Guys, uh, if you made it this far, thank you very much for tuning in, as always. Hope everyone's happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves, and I hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm going to see you in the next vlog.